a couple years down the road, uh, things have kind of taken a turn for the worst oh, on like a shit. on like a global scale. Fuck. Um, the environmental, the ecological disaster that is slowly creeping towards us finally reveals itself, right? Yeah, and um, we are at the point of no return unless like changes aren't made like significant changes aren't made like in society as a, as a species globally things are going to be irreversible a demise will be imminent so uh <clears throat> president donald trump uh, puts a lot of puts a lot of money into uh uh learning about uh climate change he helped Baron with a uh, science project at school, and it was all about the, <laughs> the globe warming. And he was like, "Oh wow, they make a lot of good points." You know, he like he like that's you what know. did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He um, and he's president again. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. You know, but he's he's no spring chicken, and he you know felt like his um, he's kind of like coming to grips with his own mortality a little bit. And he doesn't want to lose any time he's got left with his youngest, his youngest child. So, you know, they spend some time like uh, they make like a fucking volcano together for science fair. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, they do a lot of shit together. But but ultimately, President Donald John Trump learns about climate change through, you know, his son's schoolwork. OK. And he pours a bunch of money into it. And the government does all kinds of studies. And they actually learn that people named Patrick emit more CO2 than any other cohort of the population. It's like a it's like a it's a, a baffling thing that science with the capital S that they uncover. So for the good of the nation, the good of the world, of the human race, our fearless leader, President Donald Trump. Oh. Gross. Decides that all people named Patrick need to be collected. Oh fuck! What? So they go door to door collecting Patricks all over the globe. Hmm. Right? If you were if you were like a a U.S. citizen, but you were traveling overseas, there was a guy whose name was Patrick uh, Stucky. And he was traveling to Australia. He had just landed down, right? He had just taken a nap. He was like just getting over jet lagged. And then they fucking came and got him. Like, hey, you got to come back with us. And he was like, why, mate? You know, and they were like, we know it's not your real accent. We know who you are. Uh, he gave up immediately. And, uh, you know, they had him taken back to the States, you know, and uh, sounds like a Patrick. Year, yeah. Years from now, he sues the federal government. It's a landmark civil case about government overreach, things of that nature. Oh, but for yeah. now, for now, all of you Patricks are rounded up. This is insane. <clears throat> they got all the Patricks together. Um, they put all of you in the uh, uh, the Dallas Cowboys stadium. <laughs> right? All Patricks everywhere, right? You know, they open up the concession stand. It's not free, but, you know, you could, you know. Oh, uh, well, what the fuck? So they're, you know. Yeah. Right. I mean, you can eat you can eat the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches they bring if you don't want. But if you do find yourself with a hankering for some nachos served out of a football helmet, you've got options. <laughs> so you're, you're there at, what is it, AT&T Stadium, I think is what it's called in Dallas. Or, I don't know. I think I think it's what it is. So, you know, it's a big, big, giant, billion-dollar building, right? State-of-the-art. And all the Patricks are there. Yeah, all the Patricks. Every Patrick in the United States is there. First name Patrick only. What is so like if, if you, you have like a gun? If your middle name is Patrick, um, like... All the middle name Patricks across the states, they all form like a support group for like the first name Patricks. 
you know, they become like pen pals. They make some great lifelong friendships, you know. Well, yeah, my nephew is his middle name. Yeah, you guys write each other all the time. Okay. You know? Well, this, this is dire. This is not good. So, Wait, so how is this supposed to help? Well, so what happens is that they gather all of you together, right? They get the scientists there. They're measuring. The CO2 is off the fucking charts. So it actually is real? It's And yeah, like they, they're on... Trump shows up. He's got a hard hat on. They're like, sir, there's no construction. He doesn't fucking care. He's wearing this goddamn hard hat. Yeah. He's got a hard hat on. He's got an American flag cape. He's walking around, right? Uh, he's standing with the scientists. They're like, they've got a meter and they're just like moving it around. And he's like, see, see, you know, he's like all about the meter. You know, he's like doing the whole thing. So you're kind of like watching this charade go on. You and all the other Patricks are just like yeah. watching, you know. And um, slowly over the next couple of days, they start to break you guys off into little groups. There's a uh, a large series of like small trailers outside of at t Stadium. Like all throughout the parking lot. There's just a bunch of little trailers. Okay. And it's where you spend most of your time. That's where you spend all of your time, if we're being honest. There's a little bunk room. You're broken up into a pod with three other Patricks. And you guys are just kind of in there living in this space. Can't go outside. You can't leave. You got a television. You have two seasons of Monk on DVD, season two and season five. (laughs) Okay. And that's really about it. All right. And we can't leave. No, you can't leave. What a fucking bummer this is bullshit so you get um you know you're fortunately you're you're the first one in in your trailer right you walk in you look around nobody's in there yet they haven't assigned the other people so you go you find the best bunk spot right you put your fucking bag down you claim a place as your own you take a piss you know you look through everything right you put a monk dvd in it's on the title screen you're just letting it play you don't want to like you know you're still like moving around but you don't mind hearing like the intro music you know and the over and over little again. snippets yeah just tony shalhoub you don't mind it at all okay yeah there's one it, you listen to it for long enough that it's like you didn't realize this you thought it was like a loop of like one minute of like little clips and everything it's actually one track that's the same minute looped over and over again but you you have it on for like one hour and you turn around and for just a moment you see like somebody walking in on monk jacking off <laughs> <laughs> you see that and you hear him go oh my that's in like the the um yeah it's in the it's in the it's the oh, opening okay. All right. yeah it's on the that's dvd true. menu if you watch it long enough i probably google that immediately you don't find anything on it really all right i guess i chalk it up to just something that I yeah had. So your point being, you're like, you're investigating your space, right? Yeah. So over the next couple of hours, you meet the rest of your Patricks. It's actually um, Patrick Stewart. Really? I was going to ask if there were any famous uh, Patricks. It's Patrick Stewart. It's Patrick Ewing. What? Yeah, and it's an internet celebrity. (laughs) It's a guy who got really into Spongebob and he legally changed his name to Patrick and made himself look like the starfish. And he talks like that and everything. He's got a TikTok That's got like one and a half million followers. Whoa. He makes like 80 grand a year. Wow. Yeah. He is not happy. Yeah. I mean, he changed his name. I mean, yeah. Patrick Ewing is also, he also like cut his hands and feet off. What? Yeah, like Pat Patrick, like it's a starfish. Like he doesn't have like phalanges. Okay, so he's, he's so this guy like cuts a, his hands and hands and hands and feet off. He's doing extreme body modification. Oh yeah, he looks like Patrick. He has shaped his head. It's been tapered to a point. Does he know the lizard man? You ask him that. You see a fire in his eyes. Holy shit! Oh, and he no. says. I don't know the lizard man, and I don't want to. What's your beef with the lizard man? 
You ask that, and then Patrick Ewing just comes rumbling into the kitchen. He goes, where's the fucking food in this place, right? <laughs> he goes, I'm starving. Dude, I'm that. seven feet tall, you know? <laughs> he uh, he looks in the fridge. There's some PB&Js <laughs> in there. <laughs> this right. is so shitty. How is this allowed? Because our fearless leader, President Donald John Trump. DJT. The Donald, the Teflon Don. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Seems like it. He uh, he um actually passes a law where he makes everybody in America call him the executive. So you know that's <laughs> the executive. Yeah. Okay. He says this is an executive order. It's an executive order. You know, he makes the whole thing and that's your Trump. he signs it. Huh? That's your Trump. Yeah, we just debuted. So point being, you, Patrick Stewart, Patrick Ewing, and the human embodiment of the SpongeBob character are all sharing a trailer together. Okay. You wake up one morning, you see um there's like a there's like a table in like the living room, right? Right in front of like the the, the couch. It's where you guys sit and watch television, like a, just a dining table, like not a dining table, but like a living room table. There's um when you wake up one morning, there's like a tray of like plants on it. Okay. And there's a note that says, disregard this. Leave it be. <laughs> right. So you guys like uh you spend like a week kind of again stuck in this place, right? It's not unpleasant, it's just kind of boring, you know, and like you're there's just like a lot of questions. Yeah, uh then one day somebody Somebody knocks on the door. You know, they just come in. They don't care. They uh they open up. They start like looking at your plants. They're like taking the soil. Here's a guy. They're taking photographs, right? Over the next like month, these people become very invested in what's happening with the plants in your space. Right? You look out the window, you sort of see like some of the some of the trailers aren't there anymore. Over the next couple months, you see that it whittles down even further. And again, you're not to do anything. These people are coming in daily now, right? They've got remote monitors in the soil, feeding them information in real time. After about six months in this trailer, a man walks in. It's a tall, slender man, looks to be in his probably mid Mid fifties, mid late fifties. He uh he walks in, he looks at you and he goes, Mr. Dean. He goes, Could you grab the fellas for me, Mr. Dean? Okay. So you stand up, you call the boys, they come in, right? Patrick Ewing's got a PB and J in his hand, brushing it. It's always hungry. He's seven feet tall, you know? Yeah. yeah. He is. So this man standing in front of you, he says, well, gentlemen, he goes, I think it's about time we gave you some answers. Hell yeah. He says, we've been monitoring the CO2 levels in this in this trailer. Because then uh, the impact that that's had on the plants in front of you, and they're now significantly larger, right? They're lush. Oh, right. they're, they're, they're much more filled out, right? They're much more mature. Oh, all because of our farts? Well, you know, you're putting out a lot of CO2. You know, you're breathing, you're huffing and puffing. It's just coming off your body. <laughs> okay. The man standing in front of you, he says, uh, there's no easy way to put this, gentlemen. He goes, but the uh, future of the human race is in our hands. He says, we think the four of you possess incredible CO2 producing qualities. <laughs> he, sees, he says, we want to send the four of you to Mars so you can help us grow plants on foreign soil. What the fuck? He says, Our this is CO2 the CO2 levels are so intense that they're going to send us to Mars. Yeah, the four of you guys, you, Patrick Stewart, Patrick Ewing, and the, the guy who has modified his body so that he's Patrick. And we're doing what there? We're terraforming Mars? 
you're you're just gonna like be in a greenhouse basically he goes he goes you boys are co2 factories he said we've never seen anything like it and a doctor comes in and and he uh he pulls out a chart and he says the the the, the closest we've got to you guys is kevin james and he's busy so they're like he says fellas how do you feel about going to outer space man uh what are we the door we... the door to your trailer is open yeah and in the silence between when he asks and somebody responds you just hear a blood hurtling shriek they close the door quickly the fuck was that he says i don't know what you mean Patrick Ewing goes, what kind of food do we have on Mars? <laughs> well, that's a good question. What do we? Uh, he says, you know, you'll be provided with like some dehydrated meals type things, you know? Uh, he goes, And he says, honestly, they're really not that bad, especially compared to what you've been eating since you've been here. He goes, this was a temporary instruction. Okay. And you, so you want us to go there. What do we get in return? He goes, uh, once, you know, once we're done uh, laying the groundwork of uh, the garden that will eventually feed the first settlers of Mars, he says, you can come back home and resume your lives under new identities. And then Patrick Ewing goes, I'm Patrick Ewing. And uh, Patrick Stewart goes, I'm Patrick Stewart, you know, and then the yeah. Patrick, the other guy's like, I'm Patrick. I like this is my thing. And you go, nobody knows me. And you kind of like kick your feet back up, you know, you're like. Like in a real cool, non just not you know, like the very yeah. dismissive fashion. Patrick Ewing just flares his nostrils at you. Be super easy for me to do, is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, absolutely not. This is all of this is ridiculous. So we're not even getting paid. We're just going up there for un mm. untold amount of years to just hang out and fart together and help and breathe and just like release CO two from your body. No, absolutely not. No. <clears throat> So you wake up the next morning, right? The guy, he's like, hey, look, I get it. Whatever. What? He, uh, he's like, yeah, he was, uh, this, our, our project is over. There's nobody else left. They go, well, you, we don't know what we're going to do, but we have to go to Mars. We have to colonize Mars to save the human race. What? Since and then? the, and, because they remember the yeah the, oh, the, the right. whole then like the global the warming yeah All yeah right. then then okay yeah I'll go to Mars. he he's like you don't have to go he goes you no, you don't have whatever. you don't have to go what else am I doing so you go to bed right yeah you and all the Patricks go to bed that night you prepare for your final day together tomorrow and then you're gonna leave so you um you get up in that morning Patrick's making breakfast. Patrick Ewing, sorry. Patrick Ewing's making breakfast for you guys. You uh, eat your breakfast. You kind of like have a nice, normal conversation amongst the four of you, you know. And uh, you all kind of share the the opinion that you know it, it's been fun. It's been nice getting to know you all. You uh, make a, a pact to stay in touch, right? <laughs> you call it the Pat Pack. The Pat Pack. Yeah. Fuck. You all say that in a year's time, on the anniversary of the day you get out, you're all going to meet up in Vegas. You're going to wear suits and you're going to go gamble. The Pat Pack. Yeah. You're going to rent a. You're going to rent a convertible. And you're going to drive down the strip, wind in your hair, or across your bald fucking head. In the case of you <laughs> and Patrick Stewart, I mean, all of you guys are bald. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay. Bunch of bald guys named Patrick. Four bald fucks named Patrick <laughs> riding down the strip. You all kind of like laugh at the suggestion. You get ready to leave. You walk out. You open the front door. You take a step out and you walk right into the cockpit of a space shuttle. And uh, there's a guy waiting there and uh, they strap you into your seats. What? 
And yeah, they they in the dead of night they lifted up your trailer and put it next to the space shuttle. And so oh, when you walked out of the trailer, you the walked fuck? right into the space shuttle. And they uh they put you in your seats and they go, Sorry, boys, this is what's for the best. And they blast the pat pack off <laughs> into outer space. Oh no. Oh shit. Oh man. An undetermined amount of time later, uh you land on the surface. The red surface of Mars. Yeah, that would take like years. Uh, it's probably less time than you'd imagine. They're further along with things than what they let on. Okay. So you, uh, you guys like, you know, you like come out of it, right? You get ready to open the doors, right? The suit that's on uh, Patrick Ewing is clearly like too small for him, right? He's like so much bigger. <laughs> Is right. anyone there with us? Or is it just us? It's oh, just, just the us. four. Just the four of you guys. We have no training. We don't know what we're doing. How are we gonna survive this? There's a note on the on the dash of the uh <laughs> of the of the fucking of the challenger. Okay. Or whatever it is. Challenger? We're all yeah, it's, called the challenger. <laughs> yeah, it's called the um the new... it's called the Challenger by Tesla. Tesla buys the naming rights to the Challenger. <laughs> And they make it look like the Cybertruck. It's just hideous, right? They okay. put the panels on it. It looks like a Cybertruck version of like a of like a space shuttle, right? Okay. So there's a note on the there's a note on the dash that's like, uh, it said you pick it up and it says flip over and you flip it over and it's like, hey guys, uh, so you've made it to Mars. <laughs> and it says. Yeah, that's so you made it to Mars. So you because, made it to Mars. Yeah, so you've made it to Mars. Congratulations. It says uh you'll find suits in the closet behind you. Um key to the door of the greenhouse is six nine six nine. There's a welcome booklet and instructions inside. And then it says you're saving the human race, fellas. And then it says, P.S. My dad was a Patrick. <laughs> right. So you guys like Wait, you leave that? the. Uh, huh? Who wrote that note? It says Colonel. Uh, Dalton Scurvy. Space Force. <laughs> oh, man. OK. So you guys. Uh. Again, you you go put your you put your suits on. Again, Patrick Ewing is not fitting in this thing, right? No, right. He's he's like, guys, I'm seven feet tall, and he just keeps telling you that, you know. So you're like, well, I don't really know what else to do, you know. So you see that you're uh, you're like maybe fifty feet away from like the door of this greenhouse building, right? You got the code six nine six nine burned into your memory. Two random digits, you know. Yeah. Very random. So you uh you guys go, okay, here we go. And you open the door to the um the the shuttle, right? And you step out onto the Martian landscape. Wow. You feel it uh clump beneath your feet. You sort of sink into it a little bit. It's obviously not wet, but it's very dry and powdery, almost like like baby powder. It's very fine. Like more fine than any any dirt you've ever touched, you know, it's it just it's super right. fine. I can't and you look I'm out on a different planet. That is kind of I mean, I'm a little annoyed about this whole thing, but that is kind of cool. Yeah. You uh you look out on into like space, you know, and you can't like see you can't really see anything else. You know, we're so used to like having this idea of like what our perspective is from our own earth, and it looks just totally different and foreign. And he takes the first steps an American or any human ever takes on Mars. And you walk over, you enter the code 6969. Yeah, the secret code. You uh, you open the door and you turn around and you hear like a scream. And Patrick Ewing is like stepping out and he's like, he's just screaming because like this, his suit doesn't fit him, right? He has skin exposed, right? He has like, like oh, he just starts no. kind of like 
hearing it as his clothing right oh, and uh he's like running around like crazy and he's like running at you and he just beats all of you guys to death what? right there on the what martian you... surface he uh he loses his mind he they call it they call it the mark blue and he yeah uh, he like loses his, he's just, like he's like stuck in a suit so like it's not pressurized right his brain uh. like sorts of like cave in on itself and he just beats the three of you guys to death he actually picks up the one of you that's shaped like uh metric and he does like a like a uh, sort of like a what's that like a discus thing and he like throws him into outer space and because he's been shaped in such a way he just sort of like flies off and he goes oh yeah he beats you and patrick stewart to, he actually beats you to death with patrick stewart oh well we can't yeah fight him off as he's his skin is no, he, to the Martian landscape. He's losing his mind and he's a professional athlete. He's a top 50 uh, NBA player of all time in a lot of circles. And oh, you know, no, he, he just uh, is, yeah. he, he, beats the, he beats the two of you to death right there. And there's hot blood just gets sprayed all over that greenhouse glass. And uh, nobody ever uh, really lays that foundation for the farm that will feed the first Martians. What do you mean? So they show up in like 10 years from now expecting to have like things in place and uh they arrive to just like your fucking bones <laughs> and patrick stewart's bones and the way and the way that patrick ewing dropped him he dropped it so like you were laying on the ground yeah. and patrick stewart's face was like right where your cock and ball would be <laughs> and then he eventually succumbed to the martian flu and he fell and he was like laying on his back and uh oh. his crotch was like beneath uh patrick stewart's butt and like it was very sexual looking in nature Either way, the, the Martians show up there in a decade and there's nothing put in place and they, they die within six months. Humanity gets wiped <laughs> out shortly thereafter. Wait. They were they were relying on you guys to to lay the foundation and they showed up to nothing. Just your fucking bones in a three way Patrick no Stewart one in, in the middle. Oh shit, no one's getting anything done there. It's just there's no communication. There's no nothing. Yeah, but well it takes so long to get there. By the time they've already sent, you know, by the time any communication comes back, it's like they're already on the way, you know? So we never did it. and You never did it. No, oh. Patrick Ewing beat you to death with Patrick Stewart, and they never found the other Patrick. His body is probably spinning somewhere around Jupiter by now. Oh. But yeah, you died right there on the fucking Martian landscape. It was hard to tell where your blood ended and the red Martian dirt began. You know, I was going to say it was cool that at least I got to go on a planet, but I feel like I wasn't even really there for long enough to make most of an impression, much of an impression. All no. right. Well, whatever. That's so fucking stupid. You're, you're beat so to death. fucking stupid. By Patrick Ewing. Being using one of our finest thespians. Yeah, they actually take the, the trailer that you guys lived in and they, they preserve it. They like any epoxy. What? And they, uh, they, yeah, they, yeah, they just dump a bunch of epoxy in it, and then they, they moved it by crane to uh, the Smithsonian, and there's like a whole exhibit about it. It, it was called "Those That Tried to Save Us," <laughs> and it was a story of, of four brave pats that yeah, fought man. against all the odds and, and tried to save the human race, but were unsuccessful. We were very unsuccessful. Yeah. Oh, what a terrible group of pats that was. <laughs> yeah. 